teaching time. This is where we teach teens, but today for adults, well, let's say 13 and up, who need to learn more about welfare. I'm Mark Stewart Greenstein. I classify welfare into five types. One of them is good. Two of them I'm ambivalent about, and two of them are bad. Let me go in reverse order. Bad. It's the welfare that keeps people down. It comes from the state with no strings attached. It's based on feelings, not logic. We feel for somebody who right now is not very well off, so the progressives among us say we have to take from people who are doing okay and forcibly pay the people who are not. Among those people are those who don't want to improve themselves and some who if they can get by without even trying, are happy to take our money. That is perpetuating an evil. It's something that is so galling. Please view the Jesse Waters interviews with the welfare recipient. He's a food stamps guy in California. And this guy is getting money every week, buying nice food, and indulging in surfing, playing in his band, trying to get laid. We're paying for this. At least he doesn't have kids, okay? That kind of welfare is even worse. Children who see mom or dad hanging out on the couch, not even trying to work while their neighbors, their parents do seem to get out of the house each day and come back with a paycheck. Our checks the total more than hardworking 40 to 50 hour a week people earn straight up, it's not right. And it keeps kids from doing the right thing. That is evil welfare. The second type, we all hate this, but I think we're complacent about the occasional malfeasance, overpaid state workers. They're supposed to be our servants. They're paid quite well. And when they are not serving us well, that is what's galling. It's often at the administrative level, okay? <laughs> Diligent workers at medium and low salaries, I have no issue with. High salary and even higher benefit fit people, not diligent, resting on their 20 years of service that have gotten them way, way high and are going to ensure pensions for the rest of their life at their top three years worth of pay. That includes overtime. Sometimes that includes travel time. The formula is horrible. We have a way of getting out of that that's two and a half years away. But in the meantime, we should be looking to end it. People are complacent. Oh, it's one person who is on the take. All right, that's really bad when that person isn't disciplined. One example. This woman, and I don't blame her, there's natural greed for almost everybody. I blame everyone in the cabal that approved six months of salary for somebody who had quit. Okay, six months that then bridged to get her vested. That got her from nine and a half years to ten years of state service. So now we pay for her long life. She looks very young. Don't say, oh, it's just one administrator, because that one administrator's salary pays the rent for 10 families. We have to end the complacency. State workers are overpaid. You know how you know this? Because of how fiercely they cling to CBAC, okay? In private, when somebody is paid well, he's paid fairly, he knows he can go somebody else, somewhere else. So if the job doesn't work out well, ha, I'm going elsewhere. You don't hear that from those highly paid state administrators, do you? All right, third type of welfare I am ambivalent about. It is workfare. So people who do get benefits but are given a job that they wouldn't all otherwise likely get, I, I think that's a reasonable way for a human step up. Okay? So you're not qualified now. State's going to help you out because maybe 
your habits will change, your mindset will change, your work ethic will change. And we are then lifting somebody to a new status of living where they're not takers. I kind of believe in that. I think it needs to be done surgically with a lot of oversight. Right now, state bureaucracies are incapable of that kind of oversight. So we end up with paying the lazy takers who don't want to reform in the same mass as everybody else. Fourth type, corporate welfare. Corporate welfare I'm ambivalent about as well. There's an element to the well-off being able to help everybody more than anyone else. Remember, poor people don't employ people. Rich people do. Well-off companies can really make a difference. It's unfortunate when a state is in a situation where it has to. Okay, Dan Malloy offered a first five. The jury's still out whether aiding those first five big companies has really helped. I think given Connecticut's status in 2011, it made a lot of sense. And I, as governor, would use some corporate welfare. I'd like it to be limited to just backing of loans, okay? And hopefully those loans never get issued, that we don't have to use it. But to get a few things done, I would like to guarantee the investors, the people who put themselves at risk. I would build a merit turnpike with investor money, but if things go really bad, we'll, we'll cushion that. I would lure international divisions of firms, European firms, Latin American firms, Asian firms. I lure them here. That takes a little state money to do it. I would be backing schools, okay? Building of schools. Do it yourself because you can make money. We'll back you up just in case the economy is so, so bad that we have another 1933, maybe even another 2008. And things are so bad that you'd be afraid to even try to open, let the state smooth the way to make it happen. And yes, I would help bring back the whalers, okay? I think in the Hartford area, it is an automatic boost. Again, loan, I don't want to use state money, but I would back the investors if things went really, really south. Good type of welfare is private welfare. And that is my urge, that we look to the type of surgical and oversight that only private can do. And when it replaces public welfare, the recipients are more grateful because they know this is not an automatic this isn't a big institution that helped me out. This is the friars of the Saint something order that want to give me a lift up. This agency that helps alcoholics and their dependency is being funded by pictures or names of these hundred people who have personally given money to help you out and will personally revel in your success. Isn't that a good type of thing to be receiving? We can do this. This is old fashioned, but not unrealistic. This is the welfare that Connecticut had a century ago and nobody starved. People were well educated. Okay. So it is really important that those with the blinders of only government can do welfare, recognize that private foundations and private individuals do welfare better. Let's at least try this for the next few years. I'm Mark Stewart Greenstein. Thanks for joining me in this classroom.